Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I have a fully functional paper Rubik's Cube. I have the original design, I have the Minecraft design, and if you don't like either design, I've included a blank one so that you can add any colors or photos that you might want. Now before we begin the video, I want to emphasize that this is more of a visual aid, uh, a complement to a tutorial that I've already made on Instructables. And the reason I stress this is because I'm not going to include all the little bitty details and information in this video because it's already there. That being said, you'll be able to watch this video and afterwards you'll be able to fully put together the Rubik's Cube. But if you get stuck, maybe you don't know what to do, maybe you just need a little bit of help, you can go down to the link below, check out that tutorial, and any information that you don't see here in this video, you'll definitely see there. And with that said, let's begin. The first thing we're going to need is a design. As I said, I have the original design, a Minecraft design, and a blank design. All three can be found on this tutorial I made. Simply go down to the link in the description, and you can go right here above step two and download all three designs and print them on some nice thick paper. So once you've printed out your desired template, we're going to go ahead and start cutting the pieces out. Try to be as precise as possible and feel free to use a straight edge to cut along. After we finish cutting all the pieces, we're going to take a sharpie and begin to color the sides of the colored pieces that we'll be able to see once the cube is fully assembled. Now I know that's a bit confusing and if you don't know exactly what I mean, you can play it safe and take your sharpie and fill in any side that has color on it. So essentially we'll be filling in all the sides except the white flaps. Alternatively, we can wait until we glue together each piece and then fill in any white exposed edges that we see. So now we're going to start scoring the pieces. We're doing this step because the thickness of the paper we're using makes it really hard to get a nice clean fold without scoring first. To do this, you need to take a straight edge, and using a needle you're going to run along all the fold lines, pressing down firmly, but not too hard. You need to flip the colored pieces over before doing this to make sure you don't scratch the color, but for every other piece, such as the one above, you can go ahead and just scratch right on the black line. In my opinion, these pieces are fairly intuitive to put together, but just in case you don't have any experience with paper craft, or maybe you're just a little bit stuck, I've created these evolution photos that show step by step each complex piece coming together. This one right here is the center face edge, and I'm not going to include them all in this video because I want to keep it short, but if you need any additional help, please go check out the link below to the tutorial. All the photos should be there with a bunch of extra information and tips. Okay, so here I just want to demonstrate how little glue you need to put the pieces together. I found that the less you use, the better, because if you go overboard and use heaps of glue, you're going to end up with a really soggy mess, it's not going to stick together, it won't want to dry, and then you're going to have all this extra glue oozing out of the cracks. So instead, do what I'm doing here, just gently apply a little bit onto the flaps that you're going to glue, and then uh, just firmly hold them together afterwards. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but I was really surprised at how sturdy these pieces came out, considering that they're paper and I barely used any glue to put them together. So before we put this together, I just want to show you the orientation of all the axles. On top we have green, and on the other side blue, and then in this order, white, rotate to the left, orange, yellow, and red. Now it's really important that you follow this exact design, because otherwise the pieces won't fit and you won't be able to solve the cube. Now we're going to work bottom up and we're going to start with the blue side. So we're going to find our blue and white edge piece and we're just going to slide it in. And then we're going to repeat the process with all the other edge pieces. So next is red, then yellow, and orange. So now we have this blue uh, plus symbol and we can just set that down and now we're going to start putting in the corner pieces so we have the blue, orange, yellow and we'll just slide that right in there rotate and then repeat the process alrighty so now we should have the entire blue side finished as you can see here and what we can do now is just set it down and we're going to start filling in these other edge pieces all around Okay, so before we put in this last red-white piece, we're actually going to fill in the top green side first. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to be putting in pieces and rotating. So we're going to start on the opposite side, uh, which means orange. So we're going to take our green-orange piece and slide it in here. And I know it doesn't make sense right now, it doesn't look right, and that's because we'll be rotating. So there's the first rotation, 
Now we're going to put in green, uh, orange, yellow. Rotate. Next comes green, yellow. Another rotation. And finally the green, yellow, red. And now after one more rotation we can see the colors now align and we're good to go. So again, uh, we're just going to slide in the next piece. Red, green. We're going to put in a corner piece. I actually put in the wrong corner piece right here. But I'll fix that later on. And we're going to give it another rotation so that we can have space to slide in our red, white piece in. Okay, so now we're going to put in the corner piece. This is where I realized that I messed up and I just flipped them around. No big deal. And once they're in correctly, we're going to put in the last piece. Uh, I like to do this at the 45 degree angle that you can see here. I think it just uh, gives it a little bit more room to sneak it in. And we're just going to gently snap it into place. And there you go. Here we have the stand. And what you're going to do for this is you're going to cut out the outer square. Leave the inner square as it is. Flip this over. You're going to mark the diagonals. Score the inner square. Then you're going to cut one of these flaps. And I chose this one right here. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you go with. So after we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and fold all the corners like so. Just like that. And then, this is the tricky part, you're going to work your way across like this. Folding like that. Folding like that. And so on. And when you do that, the, the, the stand should naturally want to go like that. And what you do here is you just put some glue. And here this one looks messy. You can see glue and stuff. And that's because I already glued this, but I had to take it apart to show the step. So you just glue it, and there's your stand just like that. And you can put your Rubik's Cube right on it. Now I want to show you guys the cubes in action, give some tips, and talk about the design. So here I'm going to make a very simple diagonal pattern with the cubes. And as you can see, when I turn aside, I like to wiggle it a little bit. And that's because we're working with paper sharp edged cubes. They don't have the chamfered edges that a normal Rubik's Cube would, so they get caught very easily, and you know, that's not surprising. So what I like to do is grab the side I'm turning, very gently pull it away from the rest of the cube to give a little bit of gap, give it a little wiggle, and if necessary, you might have to turn the cube around and find out which piece is getting caught exactly. And once you fix that, it's very easy to turn. And even with this brand new cube that I haven't even used yet, I was still able to very easily get the diagonal pattern, and it was really, really good. So here's my first design, and as you can see, it's a little looser, it doesn't look as good, it just, this is not as nice. And that's because when I first created this on Autodesk Fusion, everything theoretically should have worked. But of course we're dealing with paper, we're dealing with glue, we're dealing with human error. So I had to make some adjustments to the design, and that's what led to what I used for the Minecraft cube, which looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. Don't worry, if you want to get the original design on the website, all the all the designs have been updated to what the to what I use for the Minecraft cube, so you won't be getting this uh, loose one. You'll be getting this nice, you know, clean cut Rubik's cube. And voila! Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions at all that were not answered in the tutorial below, please feel free to ask me. I'd love to help you guys finish this project. If you want to see more cool things that I've made, you can also go to the link and click on my username, and you'll see everything I've made on Instructables.com. If you like this tutorial. Give it a like, share the video, subscribe. It all really helps, especially with the new YouTube changes and me being a small-time creator. If you're feeling particularly generous, you can also go to a Patreon account that I just created and support me there so that I can increase the production value of these videos for you guys. Again, thank you so much, and until the next one.